Wir haben uh, after the, uh, the, uh, the federal election last year, it was the first press conference of CDU. Then it was like saying like we have we haven't verstanden, we have we, we have understood. Yeah, and right after that they started with all the right wing stuff and it was like <laughs> Aber wenn das so weitergeht, es ist genannt, werden wir in diesem Jahr mehr Flüchtlinge haben als im letzten Jahr. Das ist ein anderes Land. Und die Bevölkerung will nicht, dass Deutschland oder Bayern ein anderes Land wird. Wir haben verstanden. Hey guys, my name is uh, Jules. You're watching my very first uh, video. I'm today with uh, Julian Bohemla. He is a political science student here in Moscow, just like me. That's why uh, we know each other. And he's also a member of the German Social Democrat Party, SPD. And he is uh, about to be an intern in the German Bundestag. Today we're going to talk about the announcement of the resignation of two major political actors in Germany. Um, one of them you uh, probably know already, it's uh, Angela Merkel. Another um, politician is uh, Horst Seehofer, and you may or may not know him. He is the Minister of Internal Affairs yeah. in uh, Germany. He is also the Minister of Heimat, which is something we might talk later about because that's like a specific German concept that's not entirely clear to me and it seems that it's not entirely clear to no. most Germans. <laughs> Angela Merkel announced that she would stand down from the chairmanship of her party, yeah. the CDU, and uh, Horst Seehofer announced that he will stop being the leader of the CSU. And those are two different parties. Sometimes it seems like they're one party, also for Germans, and I think um, today um, in German politics it's very clear that they are two separate parties. Before we're going to talk about this crisis, let's talk a bit about the difference between those two parties, because they're both governing parties. Both parties are Christian Democrat parties. CSU means Christian Social Union. And then the, the CDU uh, stands for what? A Christian Democrat Union. Okay, why are they two separate parties? It begins um, basically like at the beginning of the German Federal Republic, mm -hmm. um, at the end of the um, Second World War. And today, even if they call themselves Christian and it plays still a big role, um, even bigger role in the CSU than in the CDU, there are of course people that are atheists. I know of people in the CDU that are Muslim. They, they moved from a genuine Christian party to a center-right, yeah. mildly conservative party. Um, the CDU, yeah. Um, the CSU is um, still more conservative and has some um, special... Still more Christian care. also. Yeah, still also more Christian. Most special thing um, about them is from the beginning, the CSU understood that itself as a party only running in Bavaria. The CDU and the CSU are more or less uh, ideologically the same, at least on paper. Um, they are, however, completely independent parties purely because the CSU is Bavaria-based and the CDU is Germany-based, or in fact, based everywhere aside from Bavaria. This is really important um, for understanding like the character of the CSU. Because the, the, Bavaria the, the Bavarian party. Because they are the Bavarian party. This makes them um, like pursuing sometimes um, policies that are mostly aimed at Bavaria and also sometimes especially used for the campaign in Bavaria. Um, but mm -hmm. still, of course, for the CSU, it's important to present themselves on the federal level. Also, not only um, representing Bavaria, but still more or less representing federalism. Saying, we want that um, Germany stays as federalized as it is at the, as it is at the moment. One impo uh, important aspect of the CSU in general is the fact that they um, have been in power since uh, the 50s. There was no minister president since then that was not member of the CSU. There are a lot of tensions between the CSU and the CDU and they have always been there. Sometimes they were stronger, sometimes they are not right, strong. Right. If we're looking at the uh, recent announcement of resignation of Seehofer, I think we should go a bit back to how he actually came to power, right? If you are nominated in Bavaria as a CSU politician, 
and you are not like in a big city like Munich, it's really, really, really um, high um, probability that you will become a, a parliamentarian. And the difficult part in becoming a member of parliament in Bavaria, if you are conservative, is getting nominated. So right. this is where the battle goes on. Right. And so he got elected um, and then made a Berlin ca career when, when Merkel in 2005 um, became the first time chancellor. Um, he was a um, minister in the cabinet of Merkel. There he stayed till 2008 and he left then the federal politics because then the he was asked to become minister president of Bavaria. Um, because um, there was a uh, um, for the CSU, really, really bad loss in the um, Bavarian election. It was um, for the first time for tens of years when the Bavarian government um, or the CSU lost the absolute majority. And this was the point when his career, on the one hand, take the step that he became minister president um, and was, of course, elected from the parliament because they had a coalition agreement with the FDP and, on the other hand, became party leader. From 2008 till 2018, he was party leader, so for more than 10, 10 years in the end. So, so what was the moment that the tensions between Angela Merkel and Horst Seehofer became um, evident? Merkel is normally a person that really looks for compromise in something, mm -hmm. um, but she also, also see, she does not really like being, like, being played with. It was, I think, in 2011-12 when this became a big problem was the highway tax. Uh, for foreigners. It's like ridiculous, um, but it wa um, then in the end it was decided that this thing is against European law. It was also especially aimed at Bavarians, because in Austria we have this ta uh, highway taxes, but they are valid for everyone. The Bavarian, when he's traveling to, um, to Italy for holiday or to, um, to Croatia, and then he's always complaining, oh, these Austrians with their, <laughs> with their highway taxes, and why do, are we not having this? Why do I have to pay in every country, but not the others in our country? And Merkel like, thought probably about it. complete bullshit, because Merkel knows her European shit, and she knows that it will cause definitely trouble with other countries that are saying, hey, German is a, Germany is a transit country, there are like so many routes going through it, you cannot do this. But um, it also shows a bit about uh, um, what they are like thinking about the national solutions versus European solutions. And you can think everything you want about Merkel, but she's like, for me at, le at least, in the end she's a European person. And she always tries to find, if it's possible and necessary, a European solution. A bit before, in 2010 and 2011, but especially Siova, I can remember, say things and use the rhetoric that was similar to the rhetoric that was this time exclusively used by um, national um, socialist and right-wing parties in Germany. And that was uh, far-right far right parties. And for example, what Siova said, we are not the social security office of the world. Like, this is a slogan that was one-to-one -one used by the NPD, by the National Democratic Party of um, Germany. From the beginning, they have considered themselves um, far right and national socialist and nah. it was like yeah and it was <laughs> in um, case you didn't know another um, quote that is even more radical was in 2011 wogegen wir größte vorbehalte und bedenken haben und da werden wir uns in der berliner koalition sträuben bis zur letzten patrone liebe freunde und niemals nachgeben dass wir eine zuwanderung in die deutschen sozialsysteme bekommen Das wollen wir nicht, liebe Freunde. Um, and that is really harsh for a party that considers itself Christian, social and, um, yeah, center. So, so Seehofer was already long before the rise of the AFD, Alternatives for Germany, the far-right party, um, taking this um, xenophobic discourse. Yeah. I think we should now come to the moment of escalation, not only in Germany, but uh, Europe-wide, and that's of course the migration uh, crisis. I say very simply, Germany is a strong country. We have so much geschafft. we can do it. I want to the oft uh, cited sentence, we can do it, uh, a personal opinion from me. I can give this sentence to the best to eigen machen. Cheers. Cheers. Tensions were growing between Seehofer and Merkel. Fluxes of migrants and refugees um, moved towards Germany. Basically, Merkel's government decided to welcome 
those refugees and migrants with open arms. Yeah, and not close the border. And not close yeah. the border. And that's yeah. important because it was not Merkel opening borders, but it was um, an open border that was not closed. And I always want to emphasize this because it currently, um, for some people, or some people are spreading conspiracy theories like Merkel opened the border, um, but in end of, it was a decision not to close it. And the interesting thing was there was um, even like coordination with Orban's government and with the back then um, um, social democrat conservative government of um, Austria. The Hungarian government yeah. and then the Austrian government who are governments that we now know are extremely skeptical if not against um, further increase of migrants and refugees into the European yeah. Union. We have this problem that there are so many people, for example, at the, um, at the railway station in Budapest and then Merkel decided, okay, we can, um, we can bring these people by train to Germany. Yeah. It became public and so on and a lot of people decided now in this situation it's the opportunity to get to Germany. Yeah. Um, but it was not like Merkel stand on the board and say, now we open the border that everyone can go <laughs> come in. Um, and, and then Seehof was like, no, the Austrians <laughs> on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> and this, um, and this um, situation basically um, became one of the most important turning point, points, as we know, um, in German and European politics. Mm. Um, in German politics, because it really like um, led um, or more or less brought the AfD in, into into mainstream. In, in the months after this, we had this really huge influx of migrants, and um, especially through Bavaria, because it's of course the border to Austria. Yeah. Um, it was the route over the Balkan where most people were um, coming. And in the end, we have to say the German government was not really prepared. I mean, Europe as a whole was completely unprepared for this kind yeah. of crisis, even though they knew that from a social economic point of view, having two regions, Europe and the Middle East, one being extremely wealthy and one being generally very poor, was doomed to um, cause um, such a migration crisis, right? Sooner or later, yeah, yes. especially with wars and merging and so on. Yeah. Was uh, Seehofer already complaining and saying this is a mistake before it turned out to be really the problematic crisis that um, it was? Um, at the end of 2015, he already started um, criticizing Merkel for this and said it was a huge mistake not to close the border. It raised the tensions and it made this migration problematic even more like debated because finally now um, someone in the end like close to or considered close to Merkel was also openly criticizing and this time was um, Seehofer more or less um, presenting him more and more as a prominent Merkel critic he mm -hmm. even said um, we don't have law and order at the moment in Germany and um, what Merkel has done was unlawful in the end um, in Germany he said eine Herrschaft des Unrechts that means more or less like um, the governance by injustice. I think this rhetoric is the problem. Um, mm -hmm, that he mm -hmm. says the German government is not um, holding to standards and law standards anymore. Because this is exactly the, the narrative. The AfD is all the time trying to get into the people's head. That yeah. this government is unlawful and they are against um, our um, constitution and against, um, against right. our law. And then last year there was the election for the CDU that went almost, almost down um, 10%, but also especially for the CSU in Bavaria that went down by 10.5%. They had the biggest losses. So, yeah. so they think it was a day after the election when the leadership went in front of the press. Im ersten Teil, dass wir morgen äh, die Fraktionsgemeinschaft äh, mit der CDU unterschreiben werden mit Billigung. Es ist von mir nicht in Frage gestellt worden, ob wir das tun sollen. The brotherhood between CDU and CSU can no longer be taken for granted. Yeah, at, at least. Because otherwise, why, why would you mention it, right? Wir bleiben bei unserer Einschätzung und zwar ausnahmslos, dass wir mit dem gestrigen Ergebnis nicht zufrieden sind. Quite a statement, yeah. Wir sagen den Wählerinnen und Wählern, wir haben verstanden. The main message in the end was, we have understood what you voters want and we will change our policy. And this meant, um, as we have seen in the months after it, that they will um, enhance more or less law and order politics and much harsher um, yeah, stance on migration yeah, and yeah, migration yeah. questions. One of the most important points 
the um, CSU went um, for in the um, negotiations to go into the new coalition, in the great coalition was we want to have the um, Minister for Interior Affairs and for Heimat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at what Heimat means. Yeah. Like your fatherland can be your Heimat, your hometown can be your Heimat, yeah. even, your, even your family can be your Heimat. Yeah, or, or Europe or whatever. Yeah, and, it's, and it's at the same time it's not home, right? No. And that's what Seehofer became minister of. And he made up this ministry, yeah. right? This um, was something that never existed um, before. That never existed on federal level, in fact. Um, this ah. was a Bavarian invention. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> it was invented mostly as an um, election campaign move or like a move for um, Markus Söder. Markus Söder was before finance minister. Finance minister of, of Bavaria. Bavaria. Of Bavaria, not, not of Germany. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. He said, yeah, why not introduce a um, ministry for Heimat? And it was connected with the, um, with the finance ministry. Um, in the end, it was the opportunity for him, because he was finance minister and therefore had the control over the finances, um, for him to make himself a name inside Bavaria. I can imagine that the finance minister, I mean, he's a really important minister generally, but he's not like... The He's not popular. the most popular minister. I mean, you're, you're just talking about money and about budgets and that, that generally annoys yeah. people already. Uh, if you want to make it out of that ministry and, and actually start to govern a, a certain region in Europe, you have to have a better CV than just being yeah. minister of finance, right? So the main idea, the idea that proposed like the CSU itself for both ministries, like in Bavaria but also in federal level proposed, was we want to strengthen, strengthen especially like um, not so good developed areas, yeah. but that is in the end neither an objective of the Ministry for Finance and not an objective for a Ministry of um, yeah Interior Affairs. It's more, mostly something like for the ministries that are connected with welfare. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's difficult to make the, really the connection, but it was mostly part of this. We have understood. We have understood what you want, and we are giving you now a ministry that's called Heimat Ministerium. The aftermath of the migrant crisis is still felt across Europe. I would say generally, politicians have become much more anti-migration, have started to lean much more to the right, and meanwhile, the far right is really rising in popularity. Part of the downfall of the popularity of the Christian Democrats became apparent in the last elections, which were last year, in 2017. In September. September 2017. Yeah. And from there onwards, Merkel had to um, govern a completely new political landscape. Yeah, as you said, the far right um, plays a role because they are now finally in parliament for the yeah. first time since the existent, existence of the um, Federal Republic of Germany and they are the leader of the opposition right now. Right. There was this decision by the um, CSU that it was the whole migration problem that caused the unpopularity. Yeah. Um, it was the perception. And so they decided to make this turn, this more like even more conservative turn. Also in part of the rhetoric they became more harsh. For example, Horst Seehofer once said, the Islam is not part of Germany. And so Horst Seehofer, as new interior, interior minister, had to start some policies and some um, stuff that um, will also show the voters or the people they want to get back that they are serious. And so there was this big battle um, that also on the one hand damaged Merkel, on the other hand damaged Seehofer and in general brought danger to the whole um, government. Horst Seehofer proposed we have to send back migrants that are registered in another country. When they are trying to cross the German border, um, Germany has to s deny them entry to Germany and send them back. Yeah. And while Merkel really tried to find a European solution, uh, Horst Seehofer himself um, like went on full confrontation and after Merkel had first like agreements and first talks, he said, that's not the same and um, <laughs> we have to close the borders now for these people. And Merkel um, was like also um, staying on her stance because in fact it means that a uh, minister that is in the hierarchy below her uh, threatens her authority. Then there was like this day when both the CCU on the one side and the CDU said, no, we won't find a compromise. And then in the evening, host CEO said, okay, I cannot work anymore with this government. I will step back from my post. I will end this. It had an influence on the public opinion. And a lot of people were like, 
thinking about maybe um, voting for the far right yeah the, yeah the pause for the far right we're raising it but um, by making this a topic and making this like a government crisis and it was really a governmental crisis yeah. um, this became like one of the most important topics in the whole in the whole German yeah, um, yeah, yeah. discourse and of course they benefit from it and they yeah. did not even need to do anything because they did their job so uh, this was the point he said I will step back but then Merkel offered okay we find a compromise so the compromise was okay we will introduce so-called transit centers that means like centers near the border where new arriving migrants are brought and then if they fi find out that they were already registered in other countries then they will be sent back but only after there were bilateral agreements between Germany and the states yeah. and so after this Horst Silver had the, um, like the obligation to um, like find agreements with for example Salvini the new um, far-right um, interior minister of Italy of course mm, yeah. the countries don't want to take the refugees back even when they were registered at first in their country and so we had a lot of work to do only finding these agreements and what is important, one of the driving forces why the CSU was so keen on putting this agenda in um, October this year, there was the um, state elections in Bavaria. And of course, um, like they made all these promises and saying, yeah, okay, we will have, um, we have understood, we, we haven't verstanden. And then of course they had to show that they are harsh on migrants. And then they re really put a lot of effort in building this picture that they are like um, law and order and anti-migration. Yeah the fear of losing the absolute majority was really strong yeah but in the end this whole strategy did not work out the pause for the HD got up the pause of um, CDU and CSU got down and this was a trend that did not change and maybe one or two months before the election they realized that this course is not a success and this is important pulled all blame on Horst Seehofer because yeah. he was like the guy that was associated with this harsh law and order and migration um, <laughs> a, a critical agenda. Yeah. On Merkel, of course, after the catastrophic election in, or like uh, after the election on federal level. Which was in uh, September yeah. 2017. And after the election in Bavaria. Then after this, the election in Hessen. Yeah. Another state that was also November, two weeks later, yeah. um, that was all, were all also not good for the um, Christian, Christian, Christian Democrats. Democrats. The pressure on Merkel went, got stronger and stronger. Yeah. And so she decided on herself, but of course with the pressure in the background, to say, okay, I will stay chancellor till the end of this legislature period. Yeah. But I will not run another time for um, being the leader of the party of the CDU. And this is also the last <laughs> time that I will be chancellor of Germany, right? Yes. Not long ago, um, Horst Seehofer um, announced that he will, um, of course, stay interior minister, but he will also give up the post as being the, um, yeah, the, the leader, leader of the, the CSU. CSU. So there are two dynasties, more or less, or two, uh, two Christian Democrat dynasties are ending. Like the whole Seehofer dynasty from 2008 till um, now, so for 10 years, ends. And the Merkel dynasty, on the other hand, that is even longer. I think she became um, the, the, the leader 18 years ago, right? Yeah. So that's in so, 2000. Yeah, yeah just, 2000. just imagine, I'm born in 1997, I'm 21 years old, <laughs> and I cannot remember a time when Merkel was not Chancellor of Germany. Yeah. So this is like really a really huge and fundamental change for Germany, but also for the European Union, of course. Right. There are good reasons to believe that the Christian Democrats will face even less popularity or a decline of, uh, of popularity in the near future because they're becoming faceless now, right? You have like an entire legacy based on Merkel on the one hand and Seehofer on the other hand. Do you think that this is going to be the end of the Christian Democrat era of Germany? In the end, um, we will not know. Um, but um, in, in, I think in the, mid, uh, on the, in the middle range, they will still be the strongest party in Germany. So mm -hmm. it's really difficult to find a majority in Germany without including them. And if you include them, they will have the, the chancellor. Yeah, um, because the SPD is like in a catastrophic um, or at the moment downfall. And, and then there are the other minor parties. The Greens may have a chance to become much bigger, right? Yeah, the Greens are at the moment around 20%. That's and, a lot. And this, is, this maybe is the biggest danger for the CDU and CSU, that if they may vote a more right conservative and will more or less like making Seehofer's legacy the legacy of the CDU as a whole, 
this could be the danger that even more people are deciding to vote ADLFD. So in the end, I think um, really important to watch um, in the next months will be the um, whole relationship um, between the Greens that are like had, having at the moment, in my perception, a bit of a conservative turn when it comes to economic policy and social policy that makes them attractive to good earning middle class people. In other words, the people who may vote for the Christian Democrats. Yeah. So it could be even lead to, to the, for a lot of people in Germany, probably absurd situation that suddenly the Greens may be in some years the strongest party. This whole strategy with getting back the AFD voters, maybe it will work if the AFD gets more and more radical at one point, but I still, up to now, there's no evidence. This could lead to a development that is really dangerous, and especially such comments like Horst Seehofer's comment about um, the um, like deportations to Afghanistan. Nehme jetzt mal Afghanistan. Ausgerechnet an meinem 69. Geburtstag sind 69, das war von mir nicht so bestellt, Personen nach Afghanistan zurückgeführt worden. That was not professional. Yeah, it was not just not professional. And you just can't see the guy laughing yeah. when he says it. Um, Seehofer is not only very keen on his Autobahn in uh, Bavaria, he's also very keen on his uh, Modelleisenbahn. So. Oh, sehr Wahnsinn. Sehr, sehr Wahnsinn. Oh mein Gott, das ist Das ist Seehofer? Ja, das Seehofer ist Modell. Da sehen Sie die alte Bayerische Staatsbahn. Ich habe noch erlebt die Dampflok. Ich habe die Schienenbus da hinten yeah, erlebt. Yeah. He's talking about all the things he witnessed um, himself, like the old um, steam engine um, railway uh, um, trains <laughs> from the good old Bavarian <laughs> days. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you are uh, more interested in European continental uh, politics or German politics or even Bavarian politics, um, if you're sick of Austrians driving on your Autobahn, or if you want to know more about the bizarre basement hobbies of European politicians, please like my video and don't forget to subscribe. See ya! See you.